Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Off the Record. Welcome, guys. Today on the show, the 40th anniversary of Alien and Alien Day. We recap the Anzac Day match and the booing controversy. And possibly the first look of the next generation consoles. Ooh. My name's Ashley Dryhurst. And I'm Sophie Evans. Now, guys, don't forget to follow us on our Instagram and Twitter at Off the Record LT. And if you miss out, do follow us on our Facebook and YouTube, uh, Upstart Magazine. So, yeah. how are we holidays? Didn't do a whole lot. It was kind of just like a, I really needed to chill and relax, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm jealous. But I did get to see Avengers Endgame, and I'm so glad that I did, because I didn't know when I was going to see it. It was pretty incredible. It was awesome. No, I was no pretty, spoilers. I was pretty flat out. Uh, filming documentary. Documentaries. Yeah, doing a documentary on fighting game community, uh, which was really intense. Maybe like 17 hours worth of filming, Ooh. which was really good. Um, it's all worth it in the end. Yeah, it was really good. Now, guys, we're trying a new segment for the show. It's Ask the Hosts, and we really need your input for it. Please follow the Upstart live stream, and you can ask us direct questions. That will happen at the end of the show. And we will answer your questions. Yeah, it'd be great. Uh, for news, how, what's happening in the news, Sophie? Let's see what's making news this week. American police officer Mohammed Noor has been found guilty of third-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter of Australian Justine Ruschek. Ruschek called 911 to report a possible sexual assault. Noor and his partner arrived to the scene only for the situation to escalate, leading to Noor firing his gun. Noor faces up to 17 years in prison. One Nation Senate candidate, Steve, Steve Dixon, has resigned from the party. This comes after Dixon was secretly filmed by news agency Al Jazeera in a US strip club last September. The video showed Dixon making lewd comments to many of the workers. Footage released last March saw Dixon talking to American pro-gun groups to persuade them to donate money to One Nation. Party leader Pauline Hansen has told media she is not that she does not condone, condone my goodness, condone the actions of Stevie Dixon. A report released yesterday by the Grattan Institute has shown that voters' trust in politicians is at its lowest since 1969. The Institute focused on improving Australian policies, also found that a quarter of the public believe politicians will do the right thing. The report said that there is a growing sense that people in the government look after their own interests or those of powerful groups rather than the public interest and a woman has been critically injured on Plenty Road after the driver lost control of the car and smashed into a pole. The accident took place early Monday morning and caused major traffic delays due to the road being shut off. The woman, who was a passenger, was trapped in the car for more than two hours. The United Nations has issued an urgent warning on growing drug-resistant infections. The UN has said that up to 10 million people per year could die from these infections by 2050. One of the key reasons for this is common medicines becoming ineffective. Currently, drug-resistant infections already claim 700,000 lives a year. The UN has proposed a series of measures including a worldwide ban on the use of medically important antibiotics for promoting growth in farm animals. Wow, that's what's making news this week. Now, the that car woman. accident. That woman, oh my goodness. Yeah, it really frustrates me. Uh, I don't think people realise what it what reckless driving can do. Mm. Um, it's never just you who gets involved. It's always... It's so. always impacts other people and it'd be such a frightening experience. Yeah, she was a passenger and she's putting up with it. It's not fair and, um, and the driver went to hospital but almost completely injury free. Ooh, and she was trapped in the car. Yeah, we. I mean, I w it happened just around the corner from Latrobe and me and actually one of the guys in the back uh, Rob were at university and we were on our way home. You and, actually saw it? Well, I didn't see the accident itself. Rob did because he was on his way to the tram and it happened at the tram stop, the mm -hmm. 86 tram. Um, but I heard it and I drove past it and it definitely, it makes you think differently. And it's really, it's really unfortunate. Yeah, and that, that sort of area has become kind of a hot spot for incidents. I've heard quite a few happening right like sort of near that 86 tram spot. So it's a good place to watch out for when you're driving. Yeah, it's definitely a scary intersection, but I don't think, I don't think it's a bad idea to just make sure that you keep an eye on the road. A mm. good piece of advice that my dad gave me learning to drive is just pretend like everyone has no idea what they're doing. I've heard that too. Yeah, yeah. and then that way you're extra cautious. Mm. Yeah, cool. So for the first story today, <clears throat> 40th anniversary of the Alien series. I'm a huge fan, but they host what's called Alien Day every year on the 26th of April. Uh, we have Lewis to tell us more about it. 
They say that in space, no one can hear you scream. But on the 26th of April, here on Earth, the screams of cult fans across the world can be heard rather clearly. <laughs> on Alien Day. In 1979, 20th Century Fox released Alien, a sci-fi horror thriller set in space that became a game changer to the horror and sci-fi genres. And since then, across these 40 years, has sparked itself into a whole franchise, garnering a significant cult following. It's a franchise consisting of books, video games, comics, and of course, multiple other film entries. And that's what these fans are celebrating. Everything alien on Alien Day. And what is so amazing is that it's still just as big, if not bigger, than it was the year it came out. And so to join in this celebration, I went to the Astor Theatre in St Kilda, one of the many places around the globe that are joining in by showing reruns of the films. And to this sold out crowd of near 900, whether they be young or old, these films to them seem to be far from Alien. How many times have you seen this film tonight? Probably about 14 or 15. I've seen it probably like three or four times. No, my friend hasn't seen it. Yeah, and I'm keen to see it in the cinema because I've never seen it in the cinema before. And what brings you here tonight? Uh, the fact that it's showing in a higher resolution and the social uh, impact of being able to show up, see it with a group of people. Well, because I really wanted to see Alien on a big screen and because I really wanted to come to the Astor to see a film. I guess it's kind of the atmosphere. It's just a really unique kind of sci-fi film. It is a masterpiece of, you know, cinema. The production values are incredible, the characterization is incredibly good, the story is enthralling, the, it is incredibly well put together and holds up even now. Yeah, they're just really good movies. It's got phenomenal, the, the sound obviously, the set, it's, the acting, it's all pretty great. I think it's also a film that I was way too young, <laughs> like when I first saw it, I was way too young to see it. And it's kind of, it's something I've kind of grown up with. If you missed out, need not fret. This event will be back. And I don't know about you, but I'll be marking the next 26th of April busy on my calendar. This has been Lewis Freeman, reporting for Off the Record. Uh, thank you so much, Lewis. I'm a huge fan of the Alien series. Really? Yeah, I, uh, it, in my family, it's kind of like a coming of age film. Coming of age? Yeah, because my dad watched it when he was young and he only ever really watched it with us when he thought that we were old enough to watch it. So we knew we were true men when we saw that film. I actually haven't seen them. I haven't seen them. I, I don't know, it's just sort of not like my style of, like I get that it's a really great movie and franchise and, franchise, and uh, a lot of people are really like, a lot of people are really big fans, so I'm glad they got to sort of celebrate it in a day. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, do watch it. And there's lots of stuff released with the 40th anniversary, so do keep an eye on it. And um, also, quickly before we... We want to rectify something. Before we go into sport, you said cool. I said you cool. You said cool. It, I, it felt like it fit. Thank you very much. Still, uh, still. No, I, I mean, Coins. I'll live by the jar. Live by the jar. Mm. I thought it was going to die this time. I was hoping that it would die this time. What, but... you thought that I'd ignore it? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> So now we're going on to Sports Weekly with uh, Jack and Tom. Hello, and welcome to Sports Weekly. I'm Tom and he's Jack. It's a perfect day for footy here at Latrobe's football ground, don't you reckon, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. Just raining and damp. Beautiful. So this week we'll be talking about uh, Anzac Day. Did you happen to catch Anzac Day, Jack? Uh, I caught a little bit of it. I understand there were uh, there was some com controversy around the booing that happened. Yeah. Um, so for those who don't know, that um, Scott Pendlebury won his first Anzac Day medal in um, Collingwood's win over Essendon, and fans, well, Essendon supporters, were very uh, upset with a few umpiring decisions that didn't go their way right, and they showered him with boos when he did, had his speech. And uh, Nathan Buckley, who did his own speech afterwards, called them out. Shame on anyone the boot a champion. So, what do you think about the booing? Uh, I think it's pretty disrespectful at a, at a game like the Anzac Day match. Um, when the game's all said and done, I feel like booing is not needed at all, um, particularly when someone's accepting the medal. 
but I do think there is a place for booing in the game, for people to let their emotions be heard, because it's a very emotional game footy, the crowd can, is entitled to feel whatever they want, so I, I don't think it should be a thing that's sort of brought into question in that way. Yeah, but the thing is, this sort of booing controversy, right, is now people asking, should we outlaw booing at AFL games altogether? Which I personally think is ridiculous. What do you think? Yeah, I think that might just make things worse. I think people are going to see that as a, they can't keep us down, we're just going to let our voices be heard. Like, they're going to just do it even more than what we're seeing, even at the Anzac Day match. Um, football football yeah. fans tend to, football fans tend to boo out of spite or they feel like the game's trying to tell them what to do. Yeah, there are some very passionate crowds, definitely. Almost. Dalhouse. Ablett back to back, perhaps. Gary! Brilliant. So, and this whole booing controversy actually kicked off on Easter Monday when um, Gary Ablett was booed against Hawthorne. Now, Gary Ablett is a devout Christian, and he, unlike um, Israel Folau's controversial post denouncing homosexuality, now, Gary, in his own words, claimed he originally liked the post to show support of Israel Folau's promotion of his faith, right? But then saw that it was very offensive to some people, right? Which is why he removed his like on said post. So it looks like this action of just liking that post, yeah. and even, even though he unliked it, that's just invited a barrage of boos by the crowd. Is that right? Yeah, it's just not a good look that in just one moment in time, all of a sudden, you're, the people change the way they look at you. That's why social media is one of the best and worst things to happen to sport because one moment in time, it defines you. Yeah, it's definitely had to, athletes have definitely had to keep on their toes in this day and age with social media. Uh, that's it for Sports Weekly. We'll see you next time. Back to you, Sophie Nash. Thanks for that, guys. I know normally they'd be in the studio with us, but instead joining us today, we have Kat Carrington with La Trobe Student Theatre. Thanks Hi. so much for joining hey, us. Hey, Kat, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, good, good. Now, so, you didn't watch the game. No, I was born in, or raised in Sydney, so I don't follow AFL at all. Well, okay. Sydney's actually yeah. doing pretty well when it comes to footy, but I don't. I understand. Yeah. Now, what is your opinion on booing at like public events like that? pretty awful. Mm, Have you I ever agree. experienced? No, no. I don't go on the stage enough, so I only get I have no kind of yeah, reaction cool. to my work almost. It would be a really horrible experience, it would, especially if it's like I I just I agree with you. I think it's really it's not a good thing and I I hate that it's become sort of almost part of the culture, like you, I can just be sitting on the couch watching a football game regardless of who's playing and it's like, can I hear booing in the background? Mm. Why, why do people do it? Mm. I guess they just get so caught up in the game and in the action. Because you want it to be positive, the, you want to, as a spectators, encourage or even like as audience members, regardless of what it is, yeah. you want to like encourage the people who are on stage because people get really nervous. Uh, but I think if you police it too much, you will be killing potential spectators. And with spe without spectators, you don't have a fan base. And without a fan base, you don't have a sport. So I think it has pros and cons. Hmm. Now, more about what you do at La Trobe as the coordinator of... La Trobe Student Theatre and Film. I must admit, I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> Could wow. you explain what you do? Yes, of course. I basically help run the student theatre and film office. So we run a whole range of programs over the year, um, including a couple of festivals, seasons of works, um, and a few other projects. Like we just had the 24-hour play project, where students had 24 hours to put on a play. Um, and I just help with that sort of thing. Does that include script? Like yes. dress up and what do you call it? Like outfits. Costumes. Costumes. <laughs> ignorant, ignorant <laughs> here. That's incredible. In twenty four hours. Yes. And how long yeah. does each of the plays go for? Is it? I think they're between like ten to fifteen minutes. So wow. quite long. And they're wow. all very good. Very That's funny. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, you I mean a lot of theatre is just coming up with stuff on the spot, rolling with it. Yeah, improvisation. 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 So you are quite new to the role. How have you sort of... Mm, I'm trying to... Have you fit into it? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Um, <laughs> so far you've done sort of so... You've, you've made so much involvement. Um, are you employed 
as uh, this question's not going very well. Have you got any questions? I've like lost it. No, uh, I think what she's trying to say, since being employed at La Trobe, what, what's changed? What Have you put any efforts into improving certain sections? Definitely. So big emphasis on revamping the website. Um, so we have a page through the La Trobe Student Uni Union. Um, and before it kind of just had one page, but I thought, no, no, let's let's add more. So I think up to about 20 different pages. So, it can t so if someone's interested in theatre, they can just look up La Trobe Theatre and they will find our page and find everything we do. How hard is it to join La Trobe Theatre? Like, oh, it's it? so easy. So you, would yeah. you recommend it? To Definitely. If you're interested in acting, writing, directing, costume, design, music, then we're the place for you. And never, if you've never touched it, say someone like me who's never even considered it, but Would it be easy? Yes, definitely. You're naturally a performer. Look at you go now. So <laughs> you'd be most welcome. And uh, you've performed yourself? Uh, rarely. I tend to be backstage, so producing stage management design. Um, but I have been on the stage a few times. Mm. And yeah. you've been behind the stage with some of the um, productions that have sort of started off this year, like the Moat Festival? Yes, so helped coordinate Moat Festival, so that involved more the administration, so marketing, front of house, organising various admin things. Um, so less involvement in the actual shows mm. in terms of like artistically. But still, as an actor, I thank you so much for that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I saw on your website some of the stuff that actually really interests me was the actual set creation and set design what goes into it, making sure that it's safe and stuff like that. I thought it was really cool. And I think you do you nail it, you do a great job. Um, so how can everybody get in touch with La Trobe Student Theatre? You're quite heavily active on Facebook. Yes, we have a Facebook page, an Instagram page, and a couple of pages that, on the Union website. So La what would we look up if we were looking up the if Instagram? You, oh, I think it's just La Trobe Student Theatre. Yes. And mm. similar things for Twitter. Not on Twitter. Not on Twitter. Not on Twitter. <laughs> Nobody's on the Twitter train. No. Oh, no. good. But on Facebook, we're La Trobe Student Theatre and Film. Instagram's just La Trobe Student Theatre. And our website's through the La Trobe Student Union website. And you just navigate to Student Theatre. And we've got short works coming up. Yes, yes we do. So the submissions close today, is that right? They close on Friday. On Friday. But, so short works is just student written works and it could be anything. So short plays, if you've made a short film and you want to submit it, we can play that. Short pieces of comedy, music, stand up, anything you want. That sounds so exciting. Thank you so much for Thank coming so in much today. Thank you so much for coming Thanks for having me. Really appreciate, appreciate it. Jinx. Now we're heading over to the Culture Corner where we're looking at the next generation consoles. Ooh. Hey guys, welcome back to the Culture Corner. I'm Matthias. I'm Dorito. Here on the Culture Corner, we cover pop culture news and game reviews. Sony has just announced the PlayStation 5. In an interview with Wired Magazine, Mark Cerny, the lead system architect for the PlayStation 4, announced the next generation console. Although the console hasn't been explicitly named the PlayStation 5, we assume that it's going to be something fairly similar, something along the lines of the PlayStation 5. Hopefully they don't pull a PS Vita on us. Mm -hmm. Mark Cerny wasn't shy about the information he was giving us with the PlayStation. And here's what we know so far. So firstly, what you're probably wondering is when is the PlayStation gonna be released? With the release of Stadia, Rumours have come out saying that it could potentially come out by the end of 2019 to maintain competition with Google. So Mark Sony didn't confirm the actual price of the PlayStation 5, but he quote unquote said that it was attractive for gamers. So this is most likely because of the amount of content that they've put into the console. It's probably quite an okay price considering just what the PlayStation 5 is most likely to achieve and what it's able to actually do. One of the features that fans were really excited about was the backwards compatibility of the PlayStation 5 being able to play PlayStation 4 games. This is really exciting considering it's not been a huge feature in previous consoles. Uh, and a lot of people love a lot of the games that are on the PlayStation 4 and it would be a shame to have to own both consoles. 
Another feature that Mark was excited to tell us about was the new SSD drive that was going to be shipped with all PlayStation 5s. This SSD drive is going to run a lot faster than the hard disk drives that were in the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 3. How they proved this to us was through a comparison of the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man game where loading screens that would normally take 15 seconds took essentially half a second to load. Hello, New York! In comparison to the PlayStation 4, the next generation PlayStation is going to be about four times more powerful, uh, which is kind of a big deal. I personally am super excited for the PlayStation 5. Uh, I'm a huge fan of all of its lineup. Like I'm a huge fan of the Bloodborne series. Even when it comes to the Xbox, the Gears of War series has always been a part of my life and I would be sad to miss out on it if those consoles did go away. I will be getting one myself and I just want to see how it improves because the PS4 in my mind is nearly almost a perfect console so it'd be really interesting to see just how they can make it the perfect console potentially. Now guys, we are going to be covering the next Avengers film next week, Endgame and the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole, and we'd love your help. So please contact us on our Twitter page down here. If you guys contact us, you can ask us any questions about the film, any opinions we may have, or anything you just want to know that we thought overall about the, the content that was involved, because it, it's really the end of an era for that cinematic universe of Marvel for that time span. So it's really interesting, and we're excited to deliver it to you guys. So excited. So please do contact us, and we look forward to seeing you next week. I'm Atheos. I've been Dorito. See ya. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. Thank you again for watching Culture Corner. Um, hopefully, we have no more console surprises and no more game surprises. Hopefully, it all stays quiet until E3, when Xbox is planning on releasing their details. Um, but please, Follow us on uh, Twitter at OTR Culture and help us out with those questions for next week. Um, yep. And now joining us in the studio, we have Lakshmi. Tell us what's happening this week in Melbourne. Hello, it's fantastic to be back Lush. after yes, the break. Yes, welcome back. Wow, it wasn't really a break, let's be honest. <laughs> Lots of no. work to do. Um, but this week we have the Neon Run, which is happening Saturday, May the 4th. Neon. Very appropriate. May I'll get 4th. to that because <laughs> May the 4th be with you, <laughs> as uh, The gates open 5pm for a 7.30 start, and this is happening at Yarra Park, which is near the MCG. So what this is, is it's a five kilometre Star Wars themed fun run, which is a sentence I never thought I'd actually say out loud. Wow. Have you ever gone to one? No, I've never actually been to a fun run because exercise, just, yeah, no. Me neither. I mean, <laughs> Big no. <laughs> well, like, sort of. I exercise my hands while playing video games. Oh, That's yeah. about it. Uh, <laughs> of course, okay. of course. Uh, but it is actually all for charity. Uh, the charity is called Magpies Nest and they're tackling uh, homelessness. So nice. what you can do is you come dressed up as your favourite Star Wars character and uh, don't worry if you can't actually run, there's also walking and jogging. No, it's a really positive event for a really important cause, yeah. so I, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can come dressed up as your favourite Star Wars character Who in would, a bit of, who yeah, would you in go a bit of uh, neon and sort of coloured paint as well. I'm all for the neon, all for yeah. the neon. I, yeah. Honestly, I think I'd go as R2-D2. R2-D2? Yeah, Why he that? has wheels, oh. I don't have to walk. Clever, clever. Mm. Oh god, okay. And mm. actually, this is a really good event to bring large groups to because there is a group discount for this as well. And it's also great for bringing, like I said, glow sticks and paint. Usually people have to like register, don't they? For yeah. A lot of them? Yeah, so you, if you check the website, there's more information and you can register. Uh, I believe at the moment, uh, Early Bird has finished. So, because it is the week of the event, there's like last minute registering. Mm -hmm. But again, if you bring the large group, it'll be a little bit cheaper. For you. Nice. Perfect. Fantastic. And our next uh, event that we have on this week is on Sunday, May the 5th. Uh, 11.30, see if you can make it to this after the Neon Run. <laughs> yep. Uh, and it's called Go Mad with Mucka, which is happening at Batman <coughs> Royale in Coburg. Now, Batman Royale is this massive, massive warehouse space, uh, and Mucka are this Indian restaurant from, I believe, Fitzroy. And so what they're doing is uh, holding a massive party to celebrate Holi. Uh, Holi is the Indian festival of colours, or festival of love. Colours. 
Uh, mm. And it's, I mean, it's quite revered around the world. I know a, a lot of people have heard of this one. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful festival. And if you could just theoretically make it from the Neon Run to Go Matter, yeah, the, oh colors, yeah, the colors, the colors, yeah, the colors. You're you already just, set. The ultimate, like, yeah. if your son, if you don't have anything booked for Sunday. That's what you're yep. doing. Hot, oh, hot one from the other. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, Holi is actually the festival of love because people come together and forget their grudges. So it's a triumph of good over bad. A bit like Star Wars, actually. <laughs> a bit like Star Wars. A bit um, like, we, we can relate everything to Star Wars in life. I think that's it. Yes, of course. Um, <laughs> so you can have a cup of chai, some samosas. You can watch some live entertainment, traditional Indian live entertainment, and then. The best part, you get to throw gulal, which is brightly coloured powder. It's safe. It's safe for skin. Don't mm. worry about that. I was going to say, could they do it while you're eating? <laughs> um, I don't know how well that would work, Because traditionally, the reason why Holly came about, I was reading about it last night, uh, is during the festival they would do it because they would assume people are going to get sick, so they would fill the powders with like home remedies so like your yeah. turmeric and stuff like that that's how the colors came about yeah really so normally it is I... made out of natural dyes because uh, back in the day they didn't have all of these art artificial colors and mm. synthetic things so generally the colors were made out of things that they could find easily like turmeric turmeric yeah. which is very yellow very i remember yellow. actually remember when i did used to have braces back in high school when because uh, uh, i'm indian and i eat a lot of turmeric in my food <laughs> yes. the next day after getting my braces tightened yellow just all yellow <laughs> i looked like a grandma it was so bad and um, like i don't know if i want a multicolored chai that would be interesting i'd be multicolored chai i must admit different colored foods kind of creeps me out like yeah like did you i'm not sure if you guys are old enough but did you have green tomato sauce oh my god it was the what? worst thing Heinz, is that a thing yeah no Heinz sold it maybe like 15 years ago <laughs> Ooh, wow. Showing my age okay. here, but they did green tomato sauce and it was the most off putting thing. That's disgusting. Right. Wow. <laughs> That's like unnatural. I don't think I like that. Oh, wow. It was bad. Ruined it. every meat pie for a month. <laughs> and uh, to everyone, yeah. please so let us know is... if you go. Yeah, so this is a really crazy wild event. Tickets are about 30 bucks, but it does cover all the food and powder. And uh -huh. top tip don't wear any nice clothes because you will get covered in colour. Oh, my clothes are nice. All of your clothes are nice. <laughs> oh no. All right, so we are going to go on to uh, a new segment today. So it's called Ask the Hosts, and we have some questions from our lovely, loyal Facebook viewers. So, uh, right, first question is from Shaz, who is actually part of the Morning Tea team. Thank you so much, yes, Morning Shaz. Tea team. Uh, so, how much is in Ashley's cool jar? She asks. Ah, see, that's controversial because I said cool earlier in the show a second time. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were arguing whether it was in context. So I think just for the sake of it, for the sake of it being the cool jar. And he's really cautious now. We caught him saying it a lot in the first and second episodes. But once we implemented the cool jar, mm. he suddenly sort of suddenly become stopped. But tight answer to lipped. the question. Two, there's two coins. Two coins. 30 okay. cents if you want to be specific. 30 cents. Okay. There's your answer. So what happens to the money in the cool jar? Uh, it usually just goes back into Sophie's wallet. <laughs> okay. So is that your money? <laughs> are we going to Are we going to turn it into a charity? Oh no, <laughs> this is Rob's today. That's but Rob's. Are we going to turn oh, it into okay. a charity? The so it's cool not even charity. your money. <laughs> Maybe we should. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Uh and um I think that's about all we have time for, actually. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. yeah. We've done a little bit. We've had a lot um, come across us today. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Yeah, great show today. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed talking to you guys. And remember, guys, do follow us on our Instagram and Twitter at Off The Record LT. Uh, for ask us questions at OTR Culture. Send them in. Uh, help send us out. Him. And mm. we'll talk to you next time. Thank you so much for coming in. I'm Ashley. And I'm Sophie. Have a good one, guys.